since changing the name of the Eclectic Americana Friday morning drive time radio show on January 20th, 1989 to the Bushwhackers Breakfast Club, the DJs in the collective have strived to entertain and inform our listeners. Airing from 6 to 9 a.m. Pacific at KZSE 881 FM in Santa Cruz, California, the Bushwhackers usually have two interviews a week, each airing for about half an hour. We're not afraid to ask questions or admit that we don't know something, and we don't mind taking deep dives or following attention as we get into how sausage is made in local, county, or state politics, or learning about things going on in our community, or discussions with artists. Our interviews are not scripted and are produced by myself, Dangerous Dan Orange. And we can say, good morning, KZSC, you're on the air. Oh. Let's see. I got. Let's see, I got the phone potted out. Gotta press here. Oh, here. Yeah, right there. Calamity, Kyle. Good morning, KZSC. You're on the air. <laughs> Good morning. Howdy, howdy. Nick Hi. Pasculi, Chief Public Information Officer, also Monterey County Communication Communications Director. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Bushwhackers Breakfast Club, where we always start. Is what brought you to our area, and when did you get here? Uh, I've been in the area for 30 years. <laughs> Holy moly. Wow. So, yeah. So you've seen some floods, fires, landslides. Wow. What brought yeah. you to the area? Uh, agriculture. Um, I, 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 was, I was in the agriculture industry, and that's what, that's what brought me here. And obviously Salinas Valley is the, uh, the hub of all innovative agriculture in the nation. It, it is. We're, we could talk about precision ag, but that, we're not going there today. When did you join the Monterey uh, – when did you become a Monterey County employee or stepped into this role? Uh, in February uh, February 14th of 2021. I had been in business for myself for 22 years in, in Salinas. I owned a marketing, public relations, and um, communications firm, and I sold it in January of uh, – 20. Uh, excuse me, in December of 2020 and uh, came over here. So selling a company in the middle of COVID. Uh, yeah, right after COVID, actually. Yeah, <laughs> the, the tail end. <laughs> okay, we, we won't go there. Okay, so, but yeah. as, as, Monter- as the chief public information officer and as the communications director, you're like, you're front and center for when anything goes wrong. I mean, do you have days where where you kind of stare at the at the list on your whiteboard and say, "I just wish I had some days where I could talk about all the good things going on when I, when it's just one disaster after another." Yeah, that's a good question. The interesting thing is, there's always a lot of good things going on for whatever reason. People don't want to listen to it. So, uh, but we're we're getting we're doing a great job getting the positive news out from the county, um, which there is a lot. The county, the county, and the county employees and the departments do a lot of things to make life better here on the Central Coast uh, for our residents and our businesses. And so, there's a there's a balance, obviously, and it's important to get the public information out in time of disaster because it's uh, it's no joking matter. It's about it's about uh, saving lives and protecting property. So when who declares that something is a disaster? Is that something that the county board of supervisors has to have a majority vote on, or is there is there a, a county administrator who who you know where the where does the buck stop? Who calls a disaster a disaster? Okay, so um, there the proc there's a there's a what's called a proclamation or a declaration of disaster, and declarations um, are ratified by the Board of Supervisors. So that's the formal process, then that goes up to the state. And in the case uh, we're in right now, um, we also are working under federal, a federal proclamation as well as a state proclamation so that FEMA, um, FEMA resources and federal government resources as well as state resources are available to counties for um, response and recovery. Um, However, the sheriff um, is ultimately responsible for issuing um, warnings and orders. Um, and so um, warnings are generated based on, warnings and orders are based on the information that we get from a number of experts, um, not, not just government, uh, not just county officials, but state and federal officials. And it's the culmination of that information and that data that creates the necessity to issue either warnings or orders. So during this last week or since New Year's Eve and looking ahead through this weekend, uh, run us down some of the warnings and orders 
that have been issued or are active, and these can include floods, landslides, king tides, uh, levees. Take take it away, Nick Pesculi. Well, there have been a number of orders and uh, warnings issued uh, since that period of time that you're referring to. Um, the great thing is we're archiving all that information on our website. We do have uh, the County of Monterey has a website, and if you go to the top of the page, there's a, um, a, a yellow band with the um, l- quick links to all that data. So I To be honest with you, off the top of my head, I can't give you a number, but I will say there's been, you know, over a dozen, probably two, um, maybe even more. Um, So, um, you know, it's it's been a dynamic situation because this system that we've found ourselves in is, um, or that happened upon us, I should say, um, is dynamic and it's forever changing. So we make those decisions in real time. at the moment, those decisions need to be made. Okay, so the declaration of disaster is passed by the Board of Supervisors. It goes up to the state. We also get, there's something, there was something. Down, uh, to uh, repeat that question, I'm sorry. Sorry, okay. The declaration of disaster passed by the Board of Supes goes up to the state and triggers some state assistance. You said there's also Fed assistance, and you said the sheriff is responsible for putting out warnings and orders. So yes, how yes. does the Emergency Operations Center, the EOC, fit into this? Um, so the EOC is a a collaborative effort that organizes all the resources through county, through municipal, county, state, and federal government. So right now, as it, we're talking, there's an EOC briefing happening, and the Emergency Operations Center um, is like um, mission control, if you will. Okay. Uh, if, if you if you ever saw NASA launch and you see a lot of desks and a lot of people looking at computers, um, that's essentially how this is set up. Um, and so there are uh, about 60 to 70 people in the EOC every day. Um, and they represent various different agencies, um, as well as obviously county personnel. Um, and so the EOC is gathering information, monitoring situations, um, making observations, and then um, those all that information gets collected and provided to the what I'd call the management team of the EOC, which I'm part of. And then all decisions are made based on the intelligence that's gathered. And then that information uh, essentially gets um, consensus to uh, take specific action or to um, issue additional warnings or orders. Right. So the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, Uh, puts out info on evacuation zones, emergency shelters, disaster recovery, and flooding updates. And Nick Pasculi, Chief Public Information Officer for Monterey County, you'll be pleased to know that our little radio station, KZSC, has a link to the Monterey EOC at kzsc.fm slash Monterey EOC. So then the next question is, what, what is Zone Haven and how does aware.zonehaven.com fit in? Because that's where we're told to communicate to our listeners about information about evacuation status. Yeah, so, so the, what's important to understand is that we don't want to just use one platform to get information out to the public. We're using multiple platforms. Um, we're using our website. We're using social media. Um, and it's not just the county social media, but we partner, obviously, with the sheriff's department and any number of other agencies um, throughout the county. Um, and then, of course, uh, we push out things through Alert Monterey County. And I would encourage your listeners, if they haven't already done so, to go to our website, Click on the Alert Monterey County tab at the top of the website, which is next to the information about the disaster that we're in, and sign up for alerts. They can push notifications out to your phone, um, both text notifications, and then, of course, we do have a reverse 911 system um, that also, in, in, in an evacuation order, when we need people to leave their homes immediately, the reverse 911 system gets kicked into play. And so when, when somebody presses the big red button, on reverse 911, every cell phone in the area is notified automatically? Every cell phone in the zone that's impacted, yes. Not 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 the entire county, but in the particular zone. So it's, it's very, very pinpoint accuracy with regard to hmm. the areas that are impacted. 
Got you. Well, I guess we're all learning about location information and cell phones and with what with what's gone on in Ukraine and whatnot. But I it didn't realize that you have the ability with, as you just said, pinpoint accuracy to send out notes to somebody draws a circle on a map and every cell phone in that circle suddenly gets a note. Yeah, we have a there's a computer system that we use that has a grid grid system on it and we basically go and click those grids that we want the uh, notification to go out to if i might add to at midnight um we did issue another evacuation warning for moss landing effective immediately and until further notice um so this is an important uh warning that we issued it's not an evacuation order but it is a warning, which means that people need to be ready to go at a moment's notice. And so I'd like to get that information out to your to your listeners. And if I could also just go sure. down that um, quickly, the evacuation orders that are still in place, we have Sycamore Flats, Pajaro, Salinas River from the Pacific Ocean to Highway 68, Spreckles, Chular to parts of Gonzales, San Lorenzo Park, King City to San Lucas, and San Lucas to San Ardo. And there are still evacuation warnings in effect for certain areas, which again means people need to be ready to go should an evacuation order be issued. And that is for the Big Sur River area, Carmel area to Carmel Valley, Carmel by the Sea, the Salinas Bolsa Knowles community, the Salinas Sherwood Mobile Home Park, Salinas Rancho Mobile Home Park, parts of Gonzales to King City, San Antonio Park, and South Salinas Valley south of San Ardo. Thank you. We're talking to Nick Pasculi, Monterey County Communications Director. He's Chief Public Information Officer. Uh, help me out, Nick. This I know this might be more on the trivia side of things. Is Monterey County bigger than Rhode Island? <laughs> I've never, I've never looked that up. We'll have to ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll we'll do that because Monterey County is huge you know it, it it takes an hour to drive from one end to you know monterey to the other and you know i've got a pretty pretty zippy car <laughs> I, it's it, it's, it, it it's, is a, it is a large county and in a, it, people forget it's a rural county and so and that what's interesting about being in a rural county in times of disasters is like you know if there are people in certain parts of the county that haven't really been impacted by what's happening you know maybe some rain some some inconvenience maybe their power went out but they're there's some serious, serious flooding happening, and there are people mm-hmm. whose homes are underwater. Um, there are farmers whose fields are completely flooded, and all the work they've done to prep the land um, for for planting is uh, been uh, interrupted or, or, or severely impacted. Um, so, what we have to remember, because we're a rural county, we're so spread out from each other, and there's the mountain ranges and things that divide us. That just because one area is not suffering doesn't mean another area is not suffering. So, I believe that when one suffers, we all suffer. Um, and so we're grateful to organizations like the Community Foundation for Monterey County, who has stood up a fund where people can donate money for victims of this disaster, as well as the first responders, and also to United Way. Uh, I have to big, give a big shout out to United Way because United Way is manning the 211 line, which is uh, which they're right here in the EOC with us. They're right here in my office, and they're giving information to the public to help them cope with this situation. Got it. If you're just joining us, folks, we're talking with Nick Pasculi, Chief Public Information Officer for Monterey County. Uh, so, Nick, when when the Board of Supervisors issues a declaration of disaster, things happen, and it's not just the sky opening up and money falling down. Um, I learned this last week that when a road gets taken out by, uh, you know, a flood in, in, in during a disaster, that that road can be can be rebuilt quickly without the usual bureaucracy and permitting and the amount of time that it takes to go through that. Can you walk us through what a declaration of disaster triggers for your for Monterey County uh, from both the state and the federal level? Well, it, it triggers resources, which is important um, because disasters are very, very costly, um, and and so that that's number one. So it also triggers resources to um, um, you know services contractors and things like that to help to assist in getting things put back. Um, 
you know, at, at least to a somewhat operational um, state so that, you know, most importantly, first responders can can get to places. That's the, obviously the number one priority. Um, there are um, emergency permitting that happens where, again, like you said, you cut through some of the, the challenges of getting things approved um, uh, in order to mitigate and to help with the disaster response. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm not an expert in that area, but the, the declaration of disaster does uh, allow for faster um, authorization um, to, 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 to do expenditures um, to uh, respond to what is happening in the moment. I got you. I mean, I think all of us who have friends and family outside the area realize that the weather that's been impacting our area in particular and California in general has been all over the news, all over the world. Uh, and people are are reaching out to us. You know, Bonnie's down in Mexico and everybody in the town that she's in knows that she's from Santa Cruz and they're all asking, you know, what's going on? Looking at the at, you know, this brief respite that we had, you know, this window that, that sounds like it's going to end today and looking into this weekend from your perspective, what what tell us about how the county prepares for the next wave? Yeah, so um, that, that's a good that's a good question. So we're constantly looking at you know mounds and mounds of information so we can work on on scenarios so that we can be prepared for whatever comes our way. Um, and and a lot of that has to do with logistics and prepositioning assets. Um, so we're pre-positioning equipment, we're pre-positioning rescue vehicles, we're pre-positioning personnel. Um, as we speak right now, it is, it is getting going to be a little bit stormy today. Um, we're expecting some heavy, heavy rains through the, to the afternoon. Um, and so we already have assets deployed throughout the county in areas that we believe, based on the best information we have, are going to be or could be problematic. Um, so that includes at this moment, we have um, actual people observing the Salinas River at Spreckles. We have people observing the Salinas River, you know, going towards the Pacific Ocean. Um, we have monitors and patrols along the rivers. Um, and we also have, you know, we have shelters set up. We have two shelters on standby. They're not open yet, but in, in the event they need to be open. Um, so, we, and we, and at those areas, we're also pre-positioning assets we need for those shelters. So we have trailers parked and ready to be unloaded should that a shelter need to be stood up. Um, so there's a lot that goes into it, a lot of coordination. And it's not just the county. We're working with partners like Cal Fire, California Highway Patrol, obviously the Monterey County Sheriff's Office, um, regional fires, uh, departments, um, California Office of Emergency Services, National Guard. Um, so we, we are utilizing all the resources available to us uh, when such events happen. Right, Nick. It, it sounds like there's a lot of, you know, it's so many moving parts to this whole operation. You know, you, you just listed like a, a ton of uh, uh, kind of organizations and groups of people that have to be synced up and ready to, uh, to to address any problems that might arise. How many people are, are on your team, Nick, who, who are like coordinating all this? So there's about 70 people in the um, emergency operations center at any one given time. This is a 24-hour operation. We are operating at what's called a level one, which is the highest level of operation uh, for the center. Um, so, and, and, and we're manning around the clock. So there are people around the clock. And, you know, if, if, if people get sent home to get a couple hours of sleep, they're on call. Their cell phones are next to them on their bed or their couch or their armchair, wherever they're sleeping. Um, I myself got woke up in the middle of the night. Uh, when the last alert went out at midnight, I had gone home to go take a rest, and you know, and half an hour in, I'm awake. So, um, the, 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 we're, and, and we're dedicated. I have to tell you, and this is so important. I wish, I wish we had millions of people listening to this. That everybody working here is concerned about every single human being in Monterey County, whether they live here, whether they're visiting, whether they're passing through, and we're moving mountains to try to protect this population. Got you. 
Well, we over here at KCSC Santa Cruz, Nick, we, we appreciate your hard work. We really, really do. Um, I, one thing I, I also wanted to ask in terms of the logistics that you've been describing, right? Kind of uh, getting all these organizations to sync up. Um, I, I can't help but imagine, you know, after every single disaster scenario like this, after, after you know, the hardest batch of storms, you begin to realize, your team begins to realize like, oh, you know, okay, so there here are things that like could be done better. Um, you know, he, we should have uh, prioritized this over this, you know, actionable pieces of, uh, you know, takeaways, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you have any, any takeaways off of how the disaster, how you've responded to the disaster so far? Um, uh, and and would, would you mind sharing them? Well, I can only speak on behalf of the Public Information Office. Um, you know, um, I, I mean, as, as we have tried to do the best we can in reaching people, and we do have um, populations that are hard to reach in our community. And so we're constantly looking at that. I mean, not everybody has Internet access. Not everybody listens to the radio. Not everybody has, you know, listens to television. So we're constantly evaluating that. Um, we even went so far as with Pajaro because we knew that the, these facts might exist, that we went door to door um, with flyers um, to make sure people are reached. Um, the other thing from um, a public information perspective, uh, we've done three press conferences in the last uh, few days, um, very large press conferences, and it's been important to us that we do them in English and Spanish. Um, and, and also in some cases, and when we did uh, the press conference in Pajaro, we also did it in indigenous language. Um, and we, we are working very hard to figure out a way to do that more efficiently because that does make the press conferences longer. I know it makes the media a little bit antsy and, and impatient, um, but we, we really need to, you know, we're, we need to get, we need to make sure that everybody gets the message some way, somehow. So we're constantly evaluating ways uh, that we can improve on how we push out messages and the methods that we use. Um, so I'm not sure if that answered your question, but that's that's from our perspective as the as the chief public information officer. That's those are the things I'm looking at constantly. Well, Nick Pesculi, chief public information officer of Monterey County, Monterey County County Communications Director, let's look ahead just a little bit and tell us about this king tide that I've heard uh, mumblings about. When are we going to experience it, and how are you going to get the word out? You know, like you said, in Pajaro, you went door to door. Are, how are you going to inform people what a king tide is and what they need to do to not to to keep themselves out of danger? So, so there is a high surf warning in effect right now for the entire coast of Northern California, um, and and that is um, that's critical for people to stay away from the immediate shoreline because rogue waves happen, um, and they then and, and and people tragically lose their lives because they don't heed the warnings of officials. Um, there are sign there is signage posted on coastal. Um, access areas, uh, beaches closed. It's no different than the roads closed. And if you see a road closed sign because there's water over the road, don't go past the sign. I mean, they're there for a reason. They're not just decoration. Um, so, um, and then fortunately, I, I have to give credit to folks like you and, and other, your other colleagues in the radio world and, and the television world. Um, they're doing, everybody's doing a, a, a stellar job at pushing out information. Um, the internet is full of good information. Um, and the only thing I would mention about that is uh, people should be careful of where they get information from. Um, because uh, as an example, there was some rumors that circulated a, a day or two ago uh, about an issue in South County that were absolutely untrue and because somebody posted something irresponsibly on social media. Um, so, you know, get that information about the king tides, the high surf advisories, you know, watches, warnings, evacuation orders, get them from reliable sources, get them from the county, get them from the sheriff's office, get them from the highway patrol Caltrans, and, and media folks like yourself. If you're just joining us, folks, we're talking to Nick Pasculi, Chief Public Information Officer for Monterey County, Monterey County Communications Director. This is KZSC in Santa Cruz, the Bushwhackers Breakfast Club. I'm Dangerous Dan. I'm Calamity Kyle. We have the KPFA Morning News headlines coming up in a couple of minutes. we got a couple of more minutes left. Nick, uh, and I, I want to end by reminding people 
Evacuation status can be found at aware.zonehaven.com. You can find out what's going on in your county by searching for the Emergency Operations Center, EOC, at kcse.fm. We have uh, quick links to the uh, emergency operations centers for Santa Cruz County, Monterey County, and San Benito County. So just go to kcse.fm and look for that. Uh, Nick, we got a couple of minutes left. Given where we are and what's coming up this weekend and where you and where you're sitting with 70 other people in, at Mission Control, the Emergency Operations Center, what what thoughts would you like to leave us with? Um, that we're here, that we're here for people, and that that as a community, regardless of what county you live in, um, help your neighbors. Um, you know, be mindful of you know the elderly person living down your street or the person that has a that has uh, is other dis- other abilities. Um, you know, let's you know pitch in and be patient. Um, and 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 stay off the roads if you don't have to travel. Um, mind the the heed the warnings of the authorities and the officials because we're we're making those warnings for your benefit not for ours, for the benefit of everybody else. Let me interrupt you just a second, Nick. We're in the process of changing the KZSE handbook. I don't know if we still are prohibited from using calls to action like help your neighbors, be mindful, pitch in, stay off the roads, heed the warnings. So let me just say that what Nick was saying is if you care about living to see tomorrow and being <laughs> in one piece, please follow all those calls to action. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, you're, you're a better communicator than I am. Oh, that impossible! <laughs> you're the chief public information officer for a county that's that we're we're all going to go look and see how big it is relative to the state of Rhode Island. <laughs> so, uh, your comment about you know the about roads. If you can't see the road. And, the, and there's not a car in front of you. I mean, if there's a car in front of you moving, you can use it to gauge how much water it is and whether you can drive. If you can't see that and you don't have a car in front of you, I would suggest that you wait until there's somebody who, you know, might not be quite and might not be listening to this radio station and drives forward and, 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 and shows that it's safe for you. Yeah, I mean, if you can't see the road, don't drive on it. There you go. True that. So, Nick Pasquale, thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you get back to press conferences and meeting with the Mission Control, the Emergency <laughs> Operations Center. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, have, be well. Thanks. And keep us posted. If any, if you need to reach out, you know where to find us. Uh, if there's something going on and, and you want it to, to go live, just let us know. We're on the air every Friday right. morning, 6 to 9 o'clock. Appreciate it. And stay safe, everybody. You've been listening to a podcast from an interview on the Bushwhackers Breakfast Club on KZSC 88.1 FM in Santa Cruz, California. This interview has been produced by myself, Dangerous Dan Orange. KZSC is a student-run college and community non-commercial educational radio station broadcasting from the UC Santa Cruz campus. You can stream KZSC online at kzse.org. Thanks for listening.